Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit 4, lesson number 6. Okay, our first questions here say solve each of these equations, explain or show your reasoning. That means we're going to show all our work, show all our steps. What are we going to do here? Okay, the first thing I want to do is combine like terms. So the left side of this equation has some b's and some just numbers, some variable terms, some constant terms. So let's combine anything that goes together. 2b subtract 5b, because we get a 2b and a negative 5b here is negative 3b. We've got plus 8, plus 3, which is 11 equals, on the other side we got negative 13 plus 8b minus 5. The numbers we can combine, negative 13 minus 5 is negative 18 plus 8b. Okay, now we got negative 3b on the left, we've got 8b on the right. Let's try and get all the b's on the right hand side because there's already more on the right hand side. How do we get rid of a negative 3b? We add 3b. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Those will cancel. 11 equals negative 18. 8b plus 3b is 11b. Now, we've got numbers on both sides, but only b's on the right, so let's get rid of the numbers on the left. How do we get rid of a negative 18? We add 18. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Those will cancel. We're left with just 11B on the right. And 11 plus 18 is 29. 29 equals 11B. What's stopping the b from being by itself? This 11, it's being multiplied. How do we undo multiplication? We divide. So let's divide each side by 11. Those will cancel. 29 over 11 equals b. Beautiful. Okay, what's next? Ooh. Let's start out, see if we can combine any like terms. On the left side, we've got some like terms we can combine. 2x subtract 5x is negative 3x. We've got positive 7, positive 8. That's 15 equals... On the other side, what have we got? 3 times the quantity 5 plus 6x, so let's distribute. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 6x is 18x minus 12. Okay, Ooh, I see where we can combine like terms again on the right, so let's do that. Minus 3x plus 15, we're not doing anything on that side, but we have a 15 and a negative 12 we can put together. 15 minus 12 is 3 plus 18x. Okay, now what have we got? Just an x term and a constant term on each side. I see more x's on the right, so let's get all our x's on the right. How do we get rid of them from the left? Well, we're subtracting 3x. To undo that, we add 3x. Those will cancel out. Do it to one side, do it to the other. So we have 15 equals 3... 18x plus 3x is 21x. Now, we've got a 3 over here we've got to get rid of. How do we get rid of the 3? We subtract it. Do it to one side, do it to the other. 15 subtract 3 is 12 equals 21x. Now, how do we get that x by itself? We've got to get rid of the 21. It's being multiplied. Undo multiplication with division. Divide each side by 21. So 
close cancel. X equals 20, nope, 12 over 21. Can we simplify that? Those are both divisible by three, nope, four. Nope, three. Three times seven is 21. So divide the 12 by three, that's four. 21 by three, that's seven. X equals four sevenths. And another one of these. 2C subtract 3 equals 2 times the quantity 6 minus C plus 7C. No like terms to combine on the left. On the right, we can distribute. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times negative C is negative 2C. Bring everything else down. Can we combine any like terms? Yep, we got a couple of C terms on that side. Just bring those down. 12 is still there. Negative 2C plus 7C is 5C. Okay. 5C's on the right, 2C's on the left. Let's get rid of them from the left. How do we get rid of them? We subtract. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Negative 3 equals 12. 5C subtract 2C is 3C. Now we got to get rid of that 12. Subtract 12 from each side. Those will cancel. Negative 3 subtract 12 is Negative 15 equals 3C. Divide each side by 3. Those will cancel. C equals negative 15 divided by 3 is 5. That one worked out nicer than the other ones. Solve each equation and check your solution. Ooh, more of the same. Now, we have a W on the right, negative three Ws on the left. That's actually more of them on the right, because this is positive. So let's get rid of them from the left. How do we get rid of a negative three C, we add, or three W, we add it. Those will cancel. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Negative 4 equals, add to one side, add to the other. W plus 3W is 4W plus 3. Now, how do we get rid of that 3? We subtract it. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Okay, those cancel. 4w equals negative 4 subtract 3 is negative 7. 4w, get rid of the 4 next to it. We have to undo multiplication, which means divide. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Negative 7 over 4 equals w. Now, we want to check our solution. That means taking our value for w and putting it back, substituting it into the original equation. Negative three parentheses, negative seven over four. Minus four equals w, which is negative seven over four plus three. Now, is that equal sign going to hold up? Negative 3 times negative 7 over 4 is 3 times 7 is 21. Negative times a negative is a positive. 21 over 4 minus 4 equals negative 7 over 4 plus 
So this three here, we're gonna have to add to negative seven fourths. So I'm gonna turn that three into some number of fourths. Three fourths, three in fourths is 12 fourths. And actually this four over here, whoop, erase that. This one's also in fourths. If I want to have that four in fourths, that is 16 fourths. So let's see how these work out. 21 fourths subtract 16 fourths is five fourths. Negative seven fourths plus 12 fourths is five fourths. Yes, that works. Five fourths does equal five fourths. Ooh. Another one. Okay, let's start out. I don't see any like terms we can combine already, so let's distribute. Three times three is nine minus three times negative three X is negative nine X equals Two times x is two x, two times three is six, minus 30. Ooh, now I've got some like terms I can combine. Nothing on the left, so I'll just leave those. Equals two x plus six subtract 30. Six subtract 30 is negative 24. Okay, which side has more x's, the right? So I'll get rid of them on the left, which means add 9x to each side. 9 equals, because those canceled. 9x plus 2x is 11x minus 24. Add 24 to each side. 9 plus 24 is 33 equals 11x Divide each side by 11. X equals 33 divided by 11, which is 3. Oop, another one. Okay, again, no like terms to combine to begin with. So let's... Distribute one third time. Actually, you know what? Let's do this one a little bit differently. I noticed that we've got a one third right here. We've got a one third right here. If we multiply a third by three, that cancels out. So I'm going to multiply this whole side of the equation by three. And I'm going to multiply this whole side of the equation by 3. 3 times this term is just 3 times 1 third. Those cancel out. We're left with z plus 4. Now, because we're distributing, we have to multiply that 3 times negative 6. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18 equals... Now, on the other side here, we only really have one term in here because that's being multiplied to multiply into. So 2 thirds times 3 is just 2. So a little bit different way of doing it saved us with dealing with quite so many fractions. And I know even though fractions are my friend, fractions are not everyone's friend. Now we got some like terms we can combine on the left. Z plus four minus 18 is neg negative 14. So Z minus 14 on the right side, we have to distribute. Two times five X is 10 X. Two times negative seven is negative 14. Now, we get a minus 
13 on each side. We have more X's on the right, so let's get our X's onto the right. What did I do here? I screwed this thing all up. Are you people yelling at me? I sure hope so. That is not 5x minus 7. That's 5 minus z. Let me erase a whole bunch of nonsense over here. I hope you're yelling at me. Math teachers love to get yelled at. That's still 2 times what's in the parentheses, which is 5 subtract z. Duh. Now let's distribute. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times negative z is negative 2z. Now which side has more z's? The left side does, because this has positive 1, the other side has negative 2. How do we get rid of a negative 2z? We add 2z. Do it to one side, do it to the other. So z plus 2z is 3z minus 14 equals 10. Now, variables on the left, numbers on the right. we got to get rid of that 14. Add 14 to each side. 3z equals 10 plus 14 is 24. 3z equals 24. Divide each side by 3. Z equals 24 divided by 3 is 8. Okay, what is our glorious next question? Elena said the equation 9x plus 15 equals 3x plus 15 has no solutions because 9x is greater than 3x. Do you agree with Elena? Well, here's our equation. 9x plus 15 equals 3x plus 15. Elena says there is no solution because 9x, this thing right here, is greater than 3x, which is this thing right here. So my first thought, if I see somebody say there's no solution, is, hey, why don't I try and solve this? Maybe I can. So what would we have to do? Well, there's more x's on the left, so let's get rid of the x's on the right. 9x subtract 3x is 6x. Plus 15 equals 15. Now what do I do? I got numbers and variables on the left, so let's get rid of the numbers over here. How do we get rid of adding 15? We subtract 15. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Those will cancel. 6x equals 15 minus 15 is... That's 0. 6x equals 0. Does that even make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. How do we get the x by itself? We divide each side by 6. X equals, what's zero divided by six? You got zero dollars. You share it amongst you and your five friends. Put it in six piles. Each one of those piles has no money in it. Do I agree with Elena? No. No, I don't agree. Why not? Because X equals zero. There is a solution. The table gives some sample data for two quantities x and y that are in a proportional relationship. Ooh, proportional is important. Proportional relationships mean they're linear like we've been dealing with and they go through zero. Which means 14 goes with 21. What do we do with 14 to get 21? Hmm. How about if we use a calculator? What do we multiply 14 by to get 21? How do we figure out what we multiplied by? We divide. 21 divided by 14 is, it's one and a half. So 14 times 1.5 means with one, 
When we're going that way, we multiply by 1.5. What's 1 times 1.5? 1.5. That one was easy. 64 times 1.5. 64 times 1.5 is 96. 39. Uh-oh, what do we do? What do we do? We're going the other way. Which means, instead of multiplying by 1.5, we're going to divide by 1.5. 39 divided by 1.5. 26. 26. Write an equation that represents the relationship between x and y shown in the table. So we can look at our rise over our run... which is pretty easy if we think we can add a point on here. If x is zero, it's proportional, remember? That means we go through zero, zero. That's a rise of one and a half and a run of one. Our slope is 1.5. It's what we multiplied x by to get y, and if it's proportional, there's no b. y equals 1.5x. Beautiful. Graph the relationship. Use a scale for the axes that shows all the points on the table. What are our biggest values here? Well, x has to get to at least 64, and y has to get to at least 96. So we know we have to go through a couple of points on here. We know we have to go through 0, 0. And we know that we have to go through 64, 96. Zero, zero is going to be here, but we need a scale before we can put the other points on. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 lines. How much can I count by in 14 lines to get to 64? Five lines in ten would get me. I'm going to count by five. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-five, seventy. So that got at least to here, and five is a fairly easy number to count by. If I count by fives this way, well, is it the same 14 spots? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, it is. If I count by fives this way, I'm only getting to 70. That's not going to work. Do I want to count by like sevens or something? No. I'm going to count by something that's easy to count by. 10, 20... 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Okay, we know we've got the point zero, 00 on our graph. We know we need the point 64, 96. So not quite the 65 on the X. Just over halfway between 90 and 100 on the Y, we've got two points. Let me use this fabulous colored line and pretend I did a better job of connecting that dot, and we have graphed it. Now what's next? Nothing! Okay, that was our last problem for today. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. See you next time.